Hey everybody, Mrs. Calabrese here. Happy Tuesday. Um, today we are going to be working on simplifying expressions um, and I'm really excited to do that, switching up our format a little bit, um, but still make sure that you are in a space that is distraction free. You have your notes ready to go. You can just go ahead and set those up for seven math notes and we are going to dive right in. Um, before we start doing some problems together, I wanted to review um, what it means to simplify an expression. When you are simplifying an expression, that can mean a lot of different things, um, and it really depends on what's in the problem, um, the, the steps you have to take. So the very first thing and the most common thing that you look for when you're simplifying um, a variable expression is combining like terms. We talked about that yesterday. Um, but just as a reminder, remember that like terms have the same variable. They have the same variable raised to the same power. So in this expression right here, 4.8x plus negative 7 plus negative 3.8 plus 1.2x, I do see some like terms in this expression. Um, I'm noticing two variable terms with the variable x, same variable, same power. I also noticed two constant terms. Those are the uh, just the numbers with no variable. Those are like terms as well. So um, this term and this one are like terms as well as these two. Um, when I'm simplifying this expression, I'm just going to combine only the like terms. And then when I'm done and there are no like terms remaining, I have found the simplified answer. So please take uh, just 20 seconds right now. Go ahead and write this example down on your paper. You probably noticed as you were writing that this expression only has addition as the operation. That's great because if I had subtraction, I would wanna make sure to keep change change before I started this step of combining like terms. So this one has already been keep change change, we're ready to go. Um, so I'm noticing, let me switch to a color. I'm noticing that this term and this one are like terms. And I'm noticing that these two terms are also like terms. So I'm gonna go ahead first and reorder the terms using the commutative property of addition and put the like terms just next to each other. It makes it easier to add them. So I'm gonna put my variable terms first. You're writing along with me. Awesome. Then I'm going to go ahead and combine the like terms. I'm going to do, just because of the space I have, I'm going to do um, both combinations in one step. So 4.8 and 1.2x together, that is a total of 6x plus, I'm going to go ahead and combine these in the same step. Ooh, I have two negative numbers being added. Great review. When I have two negative numbers being added, um, or when I have two numbers being added, I'm checking is the sign the same or different? The sign is the same, they're both negative, so should I add or subtract their absolute values? I should add. So negative seven and negative 3.8 is negative 10.8. So then the simplified expression here is 6x plus negative 10.8. Just a review of combining like terms, we practiced this yesterday, but a couple of strategies that I wanted to remind you of. Okay. As we work on simplifying expressions today, our expressions are getting uh, spicier. Uh, we're having to use more properties rather than just um, additive inverse property, keep change change, and commutative, where I switch the order around in an addition problem. Um, now I want to start talking about some other properties, and we're going to be using these uh, in guided practice and in independent practice today. Um, simplifying an expression also means, when necessary, use the associative property to unlock terms inside grouping symbols. So what does this mean? Um, I think about unlocking terms that are sort of stuck inside parentheses right now. Um, I can use the associative property basically to move or remove parentheses or other grouping symbols. Um, the associative property works for two operations. 
it doesn't work for everything. Um, you can't just always remove parentheses or change them um, at a whim. But the uh, operation addition and the operation multiplication, uh, if the entire expression has just that one operation, then you can move and remove parentheses, and that's called the associative property. Um, so this one says negative 2h plus 1 inside parentheses plus parentheses 6h minus 8. Now, I just said that associative property only works for addition, but I see subtraction here. So let's go ahead and use additive inverse property, keep, change, change. I'm going to use my red marker. Keep, change, subtraction to addition, change 8 to negative 8. Okay, make sure your paper looks like this. Take a second to copy it down if you have not done that already. Okay, so the associate property works for addition if every single operation in the expression is addition. So I'm checking addition, addition, addition. There's no other operations happening in between my terms. Um, so I can regroup, um, move or remove parentheses any way that I want. Um, right now, these two terms are stuck inside parentheses and these two are stuck inside. There's no number outside being multiplied. There's no subtraction. There's no division in this expression. So I'm just going to remove those parentheses. So I get negative 2h plus 1 plus 6h plus negative 8. Now that these terms are unlocked from their parentheses home, um, now I can notice that I have like terms, and now I can go back and combine like terms just like we practiced. So this step is not the final answer, but we are going to stop here because we've already practiced like terms. If this were an independent practice question, I would continue simplifying by combining like terms until I have no like terms remaining. All right, so that's the associative property. The other property we're gonna use when we're simplifying expressions today is the distributive property. And again, this property allows me to unlock terms inside of grouping symbols. It's different than the associative property. The distributive property is one that I need to use when I have the number outside of the parentheses that needs to be multiplied to every term inside the parentheses. So we've seen this structure a lot where there's a number outside parentheses and then terms inside the parentheses and then maybe the expression continues or maybe it doesn't. That tells me I need to distribute that six, uh, this factor, to each term inside the parentheses using the operation multiplication. Okay. How do I know if I should use distributive or if I can just use the associated property and drop the parentheses? Well, if there's a number outside, I've got to distribute it. In this example, there was no number outside the parentheses. I have nothing to distribute. Everything is addition, so I can just drop those parentheses, those grouping symbols, okay? Let's go ahead and practice our distribution first. I'm gonna keep change, change, because I see subtraction here. Let me use my red, here we go. Um, keep this whole uh, part of the expression the same. Change subtraction to addition. Change positive 12 to its opposite, negative 12. Okay. And let's go ahead and distribute that six. I draw the arrows to remind myself to multiply the six to every term inside. So one arrow here, one arrow here. So I'm gonna do six times x plus six times y plus six times eight. Do I need to multiply the six to the negative 12? Why or why not? I wish I could hear your answer. Uh, I do not need to multiply this six to the negative 12. The negative 12 is not within the parentheses. So this expression is not telling me to multiply six to the negative 12. Okay. All right, let's write what we got. What's six times x? Six x plus seven y plus what's six times y? I think you probably got it, six y plus what's six times eight? Multiplication practice, 48. No parentheses anymore. Those get dropped once I distribute. I still need to put the plus negative 12. 
All right, so we've talked about three ways to simplify expressions. The properties that we use totally depend on what is in the expression. Um, in this one, I didn't need to distribute. I didn't need to use the associative property. There were no parentheses to worry about. I just needed to combine like terms. However, when I've got terms that are locked inside of parentheses, I need to consider, can I, should I be using the associative property and just re uh, move or remove those parentheses? Or should I be using the distributive property because there's a number, a factor outside of parentheses that needs to be distributed? Okay. All right, I wanna put it all together. So we've seen three separate examples that each needed one of the properties. I have an example that needs to use all three. So let's give it a try. We are gonna put it all together. Can you please take a moment and write down this expression just exactly how you see it? Okay, when I'm simplifying expressions, always, when I see subtraction, I'm gonna change it to adding the opposite. So addition, here's multiplication, here's subtraction, I'm gonna make plus a negative. So now I've got two X plus negative five. Here's a subtraction, this one's really interesting, pay attention. When I change this to plus, where does my negative sign go? It goes right out here, right outside the parentheses. It does not cross over. Remember, these terms are locked inside the parentheses. Um, it goes right outside the parentheses, okay? And then I've got one more subtraction. Wow, this is a spicy question. Three plus negative five X. All right, so I can't combine like terms because I see I've got um, terms locked inside the parentheses. But I do see that I can distribute. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to just distribute this one first. I'm going to be doing 2 times 2x. And I'm going to be doing 2 times negative 5. Did you remember that was negative? Negative 5. So let's just do that right now. I've got to keep the 4x the same. Plus. 2 times 2x is, can you picture 2x's? And then picture you have two groups of 2x's. How many x's do you have? You have four x's. Uh, plus, now I'm doing 2 times negative 5. What's 2 times negative 5? Did you say negative 10? Awesome. If you did, little pat on the back, nice job. You remember that a positive times a negative is a negative. All right. So I've distributed here. Beautiful. Let's go ahead and copy this as it is, and then we'll do a second step. So plus, negative, parentheses, 3, plus, negative 5x. We are getting close. I've got now a negative sign outside the parentheses. Remember before that was just a subtraction and then a parentheses. Now it's plus a negative parentheses. What does that mean? All that means uh, is that this negative sign is sort of like a negative one that needs to be distributed. That's all it is. Remember multiplying by one uh, is just itself. This is a negative one times three and a negative one times negative five X. That's it. Let's go ahead and rewrite that. Uh, 4x plus 4x plus negative 10 plus, here's the good part. What's negative 1 times 3? Did you remember your rule? Negative 3 plus, what's negative 1 times negative 5? <coughs> Excuse me. I said negative five, I meant negative five X. What's negative one times negative five X? A negative times a negative is a positive, positive five X. All right, are we finished? If you have to ask that question, you are not finished. 
Let's go ahead and combine like terms. I'm going to circle all of the variable terms and I'm going to underline the constant terms. Go ahead and do that on your paper. All right. So we're getting really good at this. I'm going to take a shortcut. Um, the shortcut I'm taking is I'm actually not going to rewrite this with all of the variable terms first and then all of the constant terms second. We did that on the previous example, and you can still do it here. It really helps you avoid mistakes as you're learning, but many of you are getting super good at this, and we can skip that step. So let's just add 4x's plus 4x's plus 5x's. How many x's is that? Did you get 13? That is 13x plus, and then I'm going to keep my two constant terms, negative 10 plus negative 3. OK, now I'm just going to combine my constant terms. This looks like my last step. All right, um, so in this expression, when I simplified this giant expression, I ended up getting 13x plus negative 13. This is question four on your independent practice today. So go ahead and label this question, question four. And when you're working on that, you don't need to redo it. We, we did it together. So you're good to go. Just type in that answer on question four of your independent practice, okay? Um, I am going to switch on over to the document camera. So we can finish up taking some notes. And we're back, just like that. Um, go ahead and uh, make sure you have your notes ready to go. We're going to do some guided practice. So what I want you to do is please write this question, this expression, down on your paper. And I'm going to give you three minutes to complete this question. And then I'm going to show you what I got. Um, we are ready to go. Please get started. We are halfway through our time. Don't forget to keep change change.
right, there is our time. Welcome back. If you need a little bit of extra time before the answers are revealed to you, go ahead and click pause. If you're ready, here is my thinking. Let's see. Get my face out of the way. All right. Um, here is the original expression. First thing that I gave you a reminder for halfway through was make sure you keep change change or add the opposite or change subtraction to addition of the opposite. That all means the same thing. Um, there was one subtraction where you need to do this problem. So that kind of work um, you should have a negative for. <clears throat> then you need to use the distributive property as we practiced. Um, go ahead and check on your paper. Did you draw in your arrows? And when you distributed, this uh, second half of your expression should say 6h plus negative 8. Go ahead and put your finger or your pencil on that negative 8. Did you remember to change uh, negative 4 into negative 8? If you did, go ahead and put a star on your paper. Nice job on that step. You were able to use the distributive property correctly. Um, and then step number three, I use the associative property, which remembers that regrouping, move or remove parentheses. Uh, in this expression, I see there are parentheses around here, but there's no reason for them to be there. There's nothing being multiplied into them. All of the operations are addition, so we can just drop those parentheses, keep everything else the same. Last step was to combine like terms. When I did that, I got 4h plus negative 7. Okay. Give yourself a couple of big stars if you got that. So a lot of steps in that question, a ton of places to make a little mistake. Um, but chances are, even if you made a little mistake, you did do some of these steps correctly. So celebrate where you um, were awesome and go ahead and take a moment right now and pause if you need to, to make sure you have the correct work here on your paper. All right, let's move along. Here is question two. It says select the expression equivalent to this expression. Please go ahead and jot that expression down on your paper. And you have three minutes to simplify this expression and select your answer. Go ahead. Halfway through our time team.
is our time. If you need um, a moment before answers come up, go ahead and take that moment and click pause. Otherwise, here we go. All right, here's what I thought for question two. Um, if you answered C, you and I got the same answer, really nice job. Um, I want you to zoom in on your work and go ahead and find the step where you did keep change change or you changed the subtraction to adding the opposite. It should have come uh, maybe before you used associate property or maybe after before combining like terms. I did it first. Go ahead and put a star next to that part of your work. That's gonna help you make sure that this at seven is actually what it's supposed to be, which is a negative seven, so that when you're all the way down here and you've moved all your terms around, you know that you're actually adding negative seven and negative 3.8, not positive seven and negative 3.8, okay? Um, so really nice job there if you got that. We're gonna move on. Here is, um, actually, go ahead and take a pause. Uh, if you need it now, we'll work is on the board to make sure that you have correct work leading to a correct answer. Okay, the big thing here was that associate property, right? These are uh, multiple expressions within parentheses that are locked in there, even though everything is addition. So we can just drop those parentheses and then start rearranging those terms. All right, let's take a look at question three. Question three says simplify the expression below. Make sure I have all my answer choices on there. Yep. All right, folks, I'm gonna put three minutes on the timer. Go ahead and make sure you have your expression copied down and then you may begin. All right, folks, there is our time. Um, 
If you need more time, please click pause. This question was a little bit different in that it included some fractions. Not to worry, all of the properties work exactly the same way. Um, so I'm gonna show you my work um, and make sure that you have, if you didn't have this one done correctly, that you copy it. If you do, then pay attention to where you're gonna be putting stars into your work, okay? All right, so here is the original uh, expression. First thing I did, keep change change. So I made this subtraction plus a negative C, and I made this subtraction plus a negative with that negative sign outside of the parentheses. Can you check your work? That should have been your first step. Can you put a star by it if you did that part correctly? Nice job. Then I'm gonna be distributing that negative sign to each term inside the parentheses. Remember, we said this was like a negative one being distributed inside the parentheses. So let's double check that specific part. When I see negative one times negative three halves B, that becomes negative three halves B. Go ahead and put a star next to that term if you got that one right. Also, negative one times three fourths C becomes negative three fourths C. Go ahead and put a star by that if you got it. Nice. I can't wait to see your independent practice today. This is such a good spicy question. All right. Um, after that, I have this set of terms inside the parentheses that doesn't need to be. It's all addition now, so I can just drop those parentheses. That's called the associative property. And then I'm just working on combining like terms. Okay. I know I'm going to be combining 2b and negative 3 halves b. It's a little bit harder than combining um, uh, terms that have coefficients that are just whole numbers or just integers. It's a little bit um, more thinking how you have to do. So what I did, I actually did some work outside of my algebra. And I wrote just this part down here so that I could solve it. So 2b plus negative 3 halves b is what I'm trying to figure out. I'm trying to combine these two terms. I know that negative 3 halves is equal to negative 1 and a half. And for me, it's a little easier to think about what's 2 plus negative 1 and a half than it is to think about what's 2 plus negative 3 halves. So maybe this is a strategy you like too. Um, when I add these two together, I'm left with 1 half b. Okay, I said add. They are being added. Remember that when I have uh, two numbers and the signs are different, then I'm actually going to subtract their absolute values and take the sign of the number with the bigger absolute value, which is positive. So when I combined these two terms, I got one half B, this is how. Same thing when I combined the term negative C with the term negative three fourths C, I did that work outside so that I wouldn't uh, get messed up. Just a reminder that negative C is negative one C. If you knew that, go ahead and put a star by that part of your work. Negative one C and negative three fourths C together is negative one and three fourths C. I went ahead and converted it into an improper fraction. That's a lot more common in algebra, and also the answer choices in this question had all improper fractions, not mixed numbers. That's why I did that. So I got 1 half b plus negative 7 fourths c. If you put negative 1 and 3 fourths c here, that would be also correct. The answer choice um, that matches is A. All right. You get three big stars on your paper if you got that question right. You didn't do any practice with fractions today, so uh, really nice job if you got all those fraction rules without a reminder. Nicely done. Last one, team. Here's question four. This question has two parts. Um, in this two-part question, first you're going to select an equivalent expression. Um, in this case, all of these expressions are totally simplified. So you're gonna simplify this expression. You might recognize it from the beginning of the video. And then there's part two. Let's zoom out a little bit, see if we can get everything. Yep. There's part two. All right, so three minutes are on the clock. Actually, you know, this one's gonna be a little faster. Let's do two and a half minutes on the clock. Go ahead and get started.
All right, folks. Uh, if you need a second, go ahead and click pause. If you're ready, here we go. Um, my answer for part A was 6x plus 6y plus 36. Um, remember to combine that final, um, those final like terms. And then part B, um, it said the student thought that this was equivalent to the um, original expression. And yes, I found that it was. So we should have clicked yes. Okay. Excellent. Um, all right, folks, that's it for guided practice. Um, I did want to just give you a preview for your independent practice today. I'm going to switch over to that assignment. One moment. All right, I think we're back. Um, here is the independent practice assignment that you'll do today. I just wanted to preview this question because it's got a funky keyboard that we haven't used before. So I just wanted to show it to you ahead of time. Um, question seven says, enter the expression that is equivalent to negative 3 fourths, parentheses 24 minus 12x. No problem. Um, when it says enter the expression that's equivalent, it's asking you to simplify it completely. So please simplify it just like we've been practicing all um, the whole video. Um, this keyboard you can use if you uh, put your cursor here and click. That's your little like text box. It gets bigger as you type. Um, you can push these. You can also just use the keyboard. Um, this is not the right answer, so don't type this answer, please. Um, but I just use the keys on my keyboard to type that answer. Um, and then when you've got it, you can just move on to the next question. Okay, so just like uh, a regular equation editor, just looks a little different. I wanted to show it to you. Okay. Um, all right, last final reminders. Um, you have this independent practice linked in your Google Classroom assignment to complete today before 10 p.m. I also would love a uh, lesson summary from you, one to two sentences of just what's the stickiest part of today's lesson. Is there something that you learned before that you remembered and really understand better now that you can summarize for me? I really love reading those. I get an email every time you write one um, and it is a highlight of my day to read them from you. I miss you guys a lot. Um, and it is also part of your completion grade in your rubric. So make sure you're doing that in the private comments. When you are done with your lesson summary and your independent practice, please go into your Google Classroom and click Mark as Done. That just lets Ms. Russell and I know that your work is finished, ready to be graded, and then returned to you. It has been lovely to be with you. I love talking about expressions. I'll see you tomorrow. Have a good day.